Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV, uh, where it's my privilege today uh, to be joined by legendary Doctor Who script editor and author, Eric Sayward. How are you today, Eric? I'm fine, thank you. Pleased to be here. And I'm, I'm pleased that you're here with us. Now, I'm even more pleased that, uh, that Target are releasing uh, some beautiful paperback editions of your novelizations of uh, Revelation of the Daleks and Resurrection of the Daleks, which came out in those lovely uh, hardback editions back in 2019. That's right. So um, how did you first become involved with Doctor Who after writing for BBC Radio? My predecessor, Christopher Bidmead, was script editor, and he was looking for writers um, who might be up for writing a Who story. And um, I'd done some fair amount of work over in radio drama, and um, my name suddenly turned up on, uh, on, on the list of potential writers. And um, he contacted me, and I invited me to submit a storyline, which I did. And that finally led to what was the visitation. Yeah, right. Okay, which is a which is a classic episode. Were you pleased with the way the visitation turned out? Yes, it, I mean, yes, in many respects, it it, it looked it looked good. I felt like I saw it only a, um, a week or two ago. Um, I was doing something that uh, necessitated me seeing it, and bits of it work it still work extremely well. It's it, it, it's it's funnyish still, which is what I wanted. And it has that lovely opening sequence in, set in the house um, when the, when the, the family see the, the the object in the sky, and it was it was so naturally naturally done. It was uh, it, uh, it it set the right tone, and so I felt quite sad even <laughs> when, <laughs> when the poor people were killed. But then I <laughs> seemed to become known for that. Yeah, no, I was I was going to say um, what one of the things that I really was always touched by with your work. Uh, uh, it is that there is that kind of seam of almost fatal darkness running through it now and again. And, um, and whenever I've watched interviews with you, you always appear to be such a, you know, a, 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 a jovial, jovial and calm figure. I, I'm interested where that comes from within your psyche. I don't know. I, I, uh, when I start, when I, when I got into to a thing of writing for radio that, uh, finished me writing what they used to have in those days called Saturday Night Theatre. And that was a 90 minute uh, play. And I, I started to write police procedurals and invariably there was a murder or some unfortunate event. And it seemed to spread across the work. So by the time I get to something like Resurrection, I'm, I'm killing 30 people in the street at Shad Thames. <laughs> That was not because I get any vicarious thrill out of it. It's just that it just happened that way. It's just what told the story. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Um, can you compare your time script editing and writing for the fifth doctor to your time editing and writing for the sixth doctor? How do those two eras in your professional life uh, compare to each other? Well, it's difficult to say because Peter, Peter was playing a, a um, very different part from from uh, Colin, what Colin finished up doing, and um, therefore the writing of the character change changes. Um, we made him deliberately unpleasant to begin with, which some people say was a mistake, but fine, we tried, and uh, he, he, Colin did seem to, to to begin to pull it off, which was uh, which was good. Peter was a quieter, more gentle person, and. Um, Again, that that's reflected in the way you would, you would write write the part. But the thing about a Doctor Who script is that, although it has the same leading more well, man as it was in those days, and the companions, it, it, each one has a unique story, and um, you, you most of the characters in the story are invented by the the, the, the writer. And some people say, you know, the Doctor gets the bat and forgotten sometimes. Well, because he's He's not you, you come, you come very attached to your own little world and the characters in it. Yeah, that, 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 does, that does make a lot of sense, actually. Um, I think in the same way that if people who are massively into comic books would often say that 
it's the villains in say the Batman mythos that are more well drawn than Batman himself because yes. yeah. you know it, it's the same principle I, I think. Yeah. Um, now, what was the what was the genesis of your of your two uh, Dalek adventures, Resurrection and Revelation? How did they both come to be? At different times, of course, in the show's history. Um, the Revelation, Resurrection. I, I don't. I can't remember. I was trying to think of this afternoon that. Uh, how that, that came about. Re Revelation um, came about because I, I, I reread um, Evelyn Moore's uh, The Loved One, um, which is uh, a, a book, very funny book about um, funerary business in, in, uh, in America back in the 50s, I think it was, and the extreme, extremes they went to. And I, I read it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, uh, and I thought, I. I could do something around around something like this, and whereas I I, I used the book as an inspiration, I obviously didn't uh, lift anything out of it. Um, but uh, yes, that's that's how I rereading the book set off set in motion Res Revelation of the Daleks, which um, turned out to be one of the weirdest uh, stories I wrote. Absolutely, I I I find that absolutely fascinating that that was your. Uh... That was your inspiration. Um, a, I love that novel, and B, there's a very strange movie adaptation of it, of course, yes. uh, starring Robert Morse. Yeah. Yes, uh, Tony Richardson, I think, directed it. Yeah, absolutely. When he was going through his kind of sort of odd the Hollywood period, I guess, you know. And uh, yeah, what did you think of that movie, by the way? I wasn't impressed. I, I think it, it it hadn't used the book affectionately enough, really. And um, yeah, I think that's such a, a, a lovely way to put it. Now, now you've written a number of um, Target adaptations, both of stories you wrote and, and stories you script edited. And I think almost certainly as script editor contributed a lot more to the story than perhaps, you know, you were given credit for at the time, you know. Yeah. Um, so what, uh, my assumption was, by the way, that that's why you ended up writing those novelizations. Would that be correct? Yeah, I mean, uh, Twin Dilemma was was a, a bit of a disaster as a television show, but I, I I felt there was there was a lot of potential there. It wasn't funny enough, and uh, it wasn't odd enough. I felt, and I thought, well, if the author is is happy for me to do to, to do the the um, adaptation, then um, I think I think I'll have a go. And what came out was slightly odd, but it. Uh, it it was nearer to the thing that, that that it should have been on television. Yeah, which is that which that must be for you be very satisfying. Well, it is really, but I mean, it it, it I should have perhaps worked harder on on the original script. <laughs> Anthony Stevens was was his heart wasn't in it. Yeah, uh, he'd been recommended as by 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 another script editor, um, and he he really just wasn't wasn't up to it. It was very disappointing. Yeah. I, well, I think having seen both, though, the, the novel is actually rather satisfying. So I think you uh, I think it, you pulled it off in the long run. And uh, I, I think it's one of those adaptations that people really respond to. I, so I'm told uh, that people have been very kind in their remarks they make about it, uh, how, how it was different, how it, uh, it worked much better than the television thing. But uh, yeah, that's, that's nice. Now, now, how does the process differ? Um, writing and editing for TV, for broadcast, versus adapting into the novel form? Well, the, the obvious answer is that the television is dialogue and the, the novelization is prose. Um, outside of that, the, the, the process is different, even though you're telling the same story. You do expand and develop it as, as uh, it goes on. It's the nature of, the, of what you're doing. Um, so that's the main difference. Um, otherwise it's, I don't know, I've never really analyzed it. You sit down, you start it, you have the script with you, you have the program on video and uh, off you go. It's as vague as that, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me as, as, as a, an avid reader of the books in the original episodes that um, one of the great benefits is, is the things that it, it, it allows you to add. You know, and uh, and some of the extra perspective or the the additional voices that are there. I'm thinking particularly in the in the Dalek novels of your of your characterization of the Daleks. Yeah, 
mm. which is which is uh, something that uh, it seems to me it, it, it it's it's a point you can make much more clearly in the novel than, than you're allowed to within the TV show. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, could you could you expand on that a bit for me? What the the, the using the development of the sort of personality of the yes. Daleks. Yeah, it was it was a matter of convenience really. The 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 books grew. I think I used the Greek alphabet or something as to identify them: alpha one, alpha two, whatever, beta two. Um, that was simply when you had two Daleks or five Daleks in a room. You just saying, "There's the Dalek over there." Now, in, on television, of course, you can show it. In a book, you can't. So it, you you put a tag on it. Um, so it's easy to, easy recognition. Um, and then it grows because as soon as you put a name on something, whatever the name is, it begins to take on a personality. And Dal Daleks aren't supposed to have too much personality, so you instantly get told off by everybody for having made the Daleks too uh, too easygoing. <laughs> accused of. Yeah, I, I don't really think that's the case. I think uh, easygoing is not what I'd use. I think I think it's far more entertaining to read them the way that. Uh, that they're not just ciphers, you know. I think the way you you put them, you put them in the novel form is it's very in, in entertaining to read. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. It pleases me. I rather the, the, you say something like that than tell me off again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they're, they're quite quite an invested bunch, uh, Hoovians, aren't they? Um, so, so between the two, uh, is there anything else about uh, either resurrection or revelation? you could speak to us in terms of things that you uh, layers you're able to add versus the the broadcast versions um not really i, I mean I, I start talking it to death if, if uh, say too much go on too for too long you just leave it as it is no i think that's very wise and i've always wondered why um why earthshot was adapted by in martyr than, than by yourself that was s simple it, it um i written in um, the dissertation whilst I was editing, uh, working on Dr. Phil's as an editor. And I found myself working horrendously long days trying to do both things at, 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 at uh, the same time. Visitation was the first novel type book I'd, I'd written. Um, and uh, I can tell you, although it's only uh, 40,000 words, it can be an awfully long 40,000 words, especially when you're working 12 hour day um, at, at, at a television center. And I mean, the, the, the final thing was I came home one evening. I'd been um, in the studio all day. I'd been working in the office all day. And I got came home and I started, sat down. I thought, well, I'll do a bit before I go to bed. And it was 20 to 10. And I thought, this way lies madness. And so when um, visitation was made, I. Uh, decided uh, I don't think I'm going to, I'll, I'll step step out of this one I think because it, it, it will just overwhelm and uh, so I I did and I asked Rian Martha because uh, his I think his his uh, visitations have a little uh, his uh, novelizations have a little bit more character and energy in them than, than, than others and you know he's got his, his own through line and connection to the material as well Yes, you know, yeah. you know, he's a fan favorite in his own right for, for you know legitimate reasons. What when, when yeah. you, uh, Eric, just to to wind up with, when you look back over the target novelizations that you've done, which are now all beautifully collected, uh, in, including again, um, Resurrection of the Daleks and Revelation of the Daleks, in these beautiful matching target editions, um, is there is there a particular one that you're the most fond of? Of as of stories, yeah, of the uh, of the ones of you've adapted. Stories, yeah. Re Revelation is by far and away my favorite. My, my my favorite. I, I, it it works in so many ways. I was very lucky with the cast, very lucky with the director in Graham Harper, who who pumped his usual ten gallons of energy into everything he did. It, it uh, I thought it came together well, and I was I was I was pleased. Uh, which is a rare thing on Doctor Who, I can tell you, to be yeah. pleased. <laughs> I think that is the perfect note on which to end. So uh, I have had the uh, the pleasure of talking to the legendary Eric Sayward, yes, about Resurrection of the Daleks and about the mighty Revelation of the Daleks, um, which are in those beautiful 
target paperback editions, which you can order from the links attached to this interview. Thanks so much for joining me today, Eric. It was really lovely to meet you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Take care of yourself. All the best. Bye bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.